Good morning, everyone. It's a privilege and a pleasure to join so many of you in celebrating the Rockefeller Foundation's 100th anniversary and in celebrating their extraordinary partnership in Thailand and across the region. For those of you who've had a chance to look at the beautiful pictures, and there are many more in the book, will know that the partnership between the Rocker Foundation and Rockefeller Foundation in Thailand goes back to the days of Prince Mahidol, a student of medicine in Boston who became friends with the Rockefeller family and together they launched the concept of working together NGOs, governments, universities, businesses to enhance development and better health in Thailand and across the region. It was a very visionary concept back in 1915. And if you look at the world today, it seems incredibly sensible. Of course, we would work across borders. Of course, diseases in one country affect people in other countries. Of course, the economic well-being in one country has an impact on the people across the borders. Of course, education affects more than one nation. But I think back in 1915, we weren't all connected by the internet. We didn't all very easily fly between countries, fly across borders, head to different continents as if we were just heading out to dinner. And so I think the vision that they thought of back then is really breathtaking in its scope. Today, if you look across Asia, poverty levels are going down. And that's not an accident. That's the combined work of governments working together, of NGOs working together, of universities and of private institutions and of businesses. You know, today, there is more money put into development by the private sector than by all of the governments. And that's very appropriate. And that really shows, I think, a joint commitment to not just poverty eradication, but to good health, to responding to climate change, to making improvements in the environment and protecting the one planet we all share together. I think as you think about that, and as you think about the future, you can really look back a hundred years, see what they thought of then, and then start to imagine what we can think of now. I know that the Rockefeller Foundation is now very, very closely engaged in looking at responses to climate change across the globe. I think we've all learned that pollution and natural disasters in one part of the world can have an extraordinary impact in lands very, very far away. So the way in which we respond and react our resilience to climate change you know, matters as deeply in Phnom Penh as it does in Peoria, Illinois. And I think the Rockefeller Foundation is now leading the way. I'd like, if I might, to say just a few more words about the way in which the Rockefeller Foundation has pioneered development and partnerships. The Rockefeller Foundation was one of the first NGO groups that I know of to incorporate science and technology and to foster and enhance the work of scientists. They have played a leading role in setting up some extraordinarily well-known medical institutions in the United States and the United Kingdom, and in sponsoring the scientists who work there. You know, most of us want to do good. Very few of us think about empowering the scientists and the universities who create the sort of innovation we need to do good and to carry out plans. The Rockefeller Foundation has long been a partner with the United States government. Today with USAID, we continue work on important health issues across the region, on climate change issues. We partner with other donors, such as Thailand's cooperation agency, and we're now working together and looking at issues that go across borders. Our work together has eradicated hookworms, brought a vaccine for yellow fever. It's not a disease most of us even think of today. But we're now looking at improving health care in neighboring nations. We have a groundbreaking new partnership with Thailand and the United States Agency for International Development to improve health care in neighboring Burma. 
And so as we look to the future, we look back at 100 years and we see that what has really made a difference in development and philanthropy has been two key factors, innovation and partnerships. And so going ahead, I hope all of us will be inspired by this, look at the partnership built between Prince Mahidon and the Rockefeller family more than 100 years ago, look at the innovation that the Rockefeller Foundation has shown in developing scientists, in using modern modeling techniques to predict impacts of climate change. And I hope we'll be inspired by that to create new partnerships across countries, between universities, between NGOs, between governments and private sector. And that we'll use the inspirational beginnings and the work that continues today to help our citizens grow better crops that are more resistant to disease and to the impacts of typhoons or windstorms. That we'll work together to find cures and prevent disease from spreading across our borders so that an outbreak in one country is quickly detected, analyzed, and prevented from spreading to be a regional epidemic or even a nationwide epidemic. That we'll look at education as something that benefits every single one of us, whether that education occurs in Thailand, in America, in Indonesia, or in Japan. And I hope we'll take that sort of inspiration to meet the challenges of the future that I can't even now imagine, but I'm guessing there are people at the Rockefeller Foundation who can. So I'd like to congratulate the Rockefeller Foundation on 100 years of extraordinary service to people across the world. I'd like to congratulate Thailand for being one of the very first countries to partner with the Rockefeller Foundation and really showing us the importance of partnerships. And thank you all for being a part of this historic friendship and partnership. And we look forward to another hundred years. Kapumaka, les soeurs.